is the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of Amishir. And there may be some confusion depending on which updated Coptic reader version you have, but today's the second Sunday of Amishir. And so we read a familiar passage, taken from the Gospel of, of John, chapter 6. And we're witness to a wonderful message about the power of God, not only to transform an imperfect, something that is imperfect to something that is perfect, but also to create a feast out of just a few scraps. And we know that anytime that our Lord Jesus Christ traveled uh, in his earthly ministry, he was followed by flocks of people. I, I don't think we can really truly appreciate the, the numbers that we're talking about. 5,000 men, not including the women and children. And we see a picture of a man who is truly a shepherd to lead his, his sheep all over the land. And our Lord as our Lord traveled, there was always this chaos around him, the circus around him. All the people, all the children, all the sick ones who were moaning and asking and pleading for help. And there were at times when our Lord needed to leave the people to rest. He needed time to collect himself and to, be, to have time with his heavenly Father in prayer. And on this occasion, however, the multitudes get word of our Lord Jesus Christ, his whereabouts, and they follow him. When the Lord realizes that they had followed him for such a long distance on foot, he had compassion on them. He had compassion on them. He could have easily been angry. After all, he, he needed the rest. And I think we all fall into this, this mindset sometimes. I know I would have been angry when I'm, when I'm tired from a long week or things like that. I get grumpy. And if I get interrupted from my quiet time, I get grumpy. Our Lord could have been angry. This is his time for rest. But he was moved with compassion. He heard the voices, and he could not leave them to just wander and to fend for themselves. After many hours, he had healed all the sick, and it was getting very late. And the disciples came to Christ, and they asked him to send the people away so they, that they were hungry, and they needed to take care of themselves. The disciples were thoughtful. This was a good thought. This is something that was positive. They did not want anyone to suffer from hunger, especially when they were in such a remote place. But the disciples lack something. They lack something in their approach. The Lord replied to the disciples and said, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. I looked at him like, what's, what's, I don't get it. Like, what's the problem here? We only have five loaves and two fish. There's, there's no way. And so, as I said, they were thoughtful, but they lacked something. They lacked faith. They lacked faith. I've heard it said before that our math is not God's math. Our math is not God's math. And this is the lesson for the disciples, and for each one of us, to be frank. They had insisted, saying, we only have five loaves and two fish, and they were right. That's all they had, literally speaking. But they had made a big mistake, and the Lord replied with the answer. It wasn't just the answer to the problem but honestly, it's the answer to every problem. Every problem that seems impossible. It just seems not logical. Our Lord says the answer, bring them here to me. That was the answer. Bring them here to me. It's as if our Lord is saying, in your hands, it's only five loaves and two fish. But in my hands, it's a feast. Oftentimes, we limit ourselves because we don't believe that God is God. We don't truly believe that God is God. Because we don't actually think that he is watching over us, that he loves us, and that he wants the best for us. Sometimes we think that he's aloof, away from mankind, distant from mankind. And maybe there's a question deep within us. Maybe we're afraid to give him control over our lives. Maybe that's our hesitation. We're afraid. But I pray that we're not faithless people. I, I pray that we are people of faith, truly people of faith. The loaves and the fish, which in the disciples' hands couldn't barely even feed a small family, became in the hands of the master a feast that fed thousands, and it had baskets left over. 
The Christian faith is not seeing is believing. Our faith is believing is seeing. Believing is seeing. Tasting the gifts of God and choosing to follow Him and seeing the results. That's our faith. Each one of us has things that we'd like to do or like to accomplish. And each one of us, I'm speaking for myself, is very limited. I'm very limited in my talents and very limited in our abilities. Again, speaking for myself, you all have much more talents than I do. But Christ, he gives us a way to multiply what is good in each one of us. We bring those gifts and those talents, even our weaknesses, to him. Even the best of our attributes are scraps in our hands, but they're made perfect in his hands. We have to understand this. So where do we start? We start in prayer. And it's a simple prayer. We say, Lord, I am a simple person. I have very little to offer to anyone else. I can barely take care of myself. But I offer my life to you. And I ask you to bless this simple offering for the glory of your holy name. It's a simple prayer. It's an honest prayer. It's a prayer of faith. God can't ignore this prayer if it's said with your your whole heart because God loves a humble prayer. We see an example of this with Moses who stuttered and yet he was chosen to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Once his life was offered up to God, there, there honestly wasn't much that Moses could have done. He became a blessing to his family and to all the people of Israel. We are given a choice every day where we can choose to let faith or the lack of faith dictate our lives. We can choose to be known by our strengths and our weaknesses, or we can, be, or we can choose to be known by the one whom we serve. Our Lord Jesus Christ has done And he will continue to do miracles in our church and in our lives. And he does this when we must first put everything in its rightful place, which is in his loving hands. We have to have faith. Today's gospel passage is about the five loaves and the two fish. And it's a reminder that our Lord doesn't need much in order to accomplish his will. But there's one thing that that he requires that we entrust everything to him. Everything. We can't hold back. The kid, the little boy in the gospel, he could have kept one back, given him four. It was plenty. He gave everything. Everything. The worst thing in the world is to be distracted and to set your gaze on anything else. Instead, we are called to bring our focus and everything else to God. We bring everything to God. We bring ourselves, our senses, our minds, our service, our worship, our lives. That's the meaning and the purpose of the Christian life. He doesn't need us to be saints before he can use us. This is a common misconception, especially among the youth. I'm not ready to serve. I don't know what that means. Not only the youth, but the adults say that too. I'm not, I'm not right with God yet. I have to get right with God first, and then I'll serve, whatever that means. We fall into this trap. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't wait for us to have a multitude of gifts and talents before we can become useful. Whoever we are, no matter your age or your size or your status or your strengths or your weaknesses, God can use you in ways that you could never imagine. You just have to be honest. God can take your meager offerings, your talents, your gifts, your resources. If you lay them down humbly at his feet, at his service, he can multiply them in a miracle, in a miraculous way. And This is exactly what he does with the disciples, right? So what does that mean for us today? St. Cyril says, just because we are powerless to accomplish anything 
we should not be limited by our inability to understand how God will accomplish these things beyond our understanding. Then we will be confirmed in hope through steadfast faith and the power of God to multiply even our smallest acts of goodness. Christ's feeding of the multitude is an example of all of us being bold in believing that with God, all things are possible. We've taken that verse for granted. There is not much good that can come from dwelling on our limitation. It's not healthy. It's not productive. So the Lord doesn't need you to be perfect. It is the Lord himself who will perfect you. Bring your sins, bring your weaknesses so that God can heal them. Bring them in prayer, bring them in confession, bring them with intense supplication, bring them with matanya, prostrations. Bring your gifts and your very lives so that whatever God touches, he leaves changed. He transforms. God doesn't need our abundance. In fact, if you really pay attention to this passage for today, he only worked the miracle when they realized that they were lacking. God doesn't need our abundance. He knows that we're poor. He wants to be our abundance. So the feeding of the 5,000 is not mostly about Christ doing a miracle. Otherwise, it would have simply been repeated, the same action every day, and the people would have proclaimed him king. But that's not what happens in the gospel. The miracle is a sign to the disciples and to all who believe in and follow Christ that he himself is making the kingdom of God present in the world and near to us. Our Lord warns the people not to follow him, just to have their stomachs filled. This is what we're kind of contemplating last week. He's not a genie. We don't go to him just to fulfill our wishes. Our Lord is much more concerned about people that begin to think about the reality of the kingdom of God. He was pointing that, that kingdom out to us, and he's pointing us to that kingdom. And when we receive the body and the blood of Christ, the Eucharist, we are again being reminded not to live for this world alone, but to seek the kingdom of God, knowing that all else will be given to us when our priorities are straight. And just like at the end of every liturgy, we're sent back into the world to tell the world that we have witnessed and we have received from God and the excitement. It is not an endless supply of food that we offer to the people, to this world, as wonderful as that would be. No, it's the experience of Christ to find our way to the kingdom of God and to offer to a world who is hungry, to offer them God and this roadmap to the kingdom of heaven. That's truly what this is about. So to be a disciple of Christ means that we have to be willing to share the blessings with this world. Our Lord knows that we don't have enough to feed or to take care of everyone who comes in our midst. And our problem is, is that oftentimes we don't offer all that we have. We hold back a little bit. We hesitate. We're afraid of being too Christian, too holy, holier than thou. Those kind of things. We don't want to be seen as, as too over the top, too much love of Christ. We'd rather be a little rebellious, that people see a rebellious side of, of things so that we can kind of go with the flow. We don't want to be stand out in that way. And so what our Lord does expect is for us to offer what little that we have to him, the Lord of all, for the service of others. And then he will work out a miracle to make sure that it's enough. In fact, he will make sure that it's more than enough. The disciples asked Christ to send the crowds away. And they barely had enough nourishment and resources for themselves. 
Instead, our Lord takes from the disciples what resources they did have, and he says, the crowd doesn't have to go, you can go. Our tasks as, as disciples, our, our test of faith, is to see whether we are willing to, to be completely and joyfully generous with what we have been given to make sure that the crowds see the, the marvels of God and to see the signs of his kingdom breaking into the reality today. The God we serve is faithful. And he is generous. And he is merciful. And he is long-suffering. May the Lord see our sicknesses and our hunger. And may he have compassion on us as he did with the multitude and fill us with every good thing, both material and spiritual, because he alone can satisfy us. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.